what's going on YouTube I wanted to make a video for you to give you some progress updates on my car AV install so I'll just kind of start by saying thanks for hanging around I know it's been a while since I posted a video but I hope to change that and start giving you guys some more good stuff to watch starting with this one so I'm gonna go over my current equipment list um, starting with my head unit here it's a sony wx 900 bt uh, double din head unit i gave 110 dollars for it it's been pretty good so far i can't complain for the price um, in the back i have an nvx jad 900.5 five channel amp along with a just a, a sony two channel 65 watts uh, per channel amp I traded some old stuff I had for running my rear fill uh, For the front stage and the doors I have from a massive audio XK6 Component set the midwoofers are from that set, but I traded the tweeters out for some BZRK SQT100 tweeters. Uh, they were recommended to me off of Reddit's Car AV forum. There was a giveaway there. I just decided to go ahead and support the guy by buying a set. They weren't very expensive. About $18 on Amazon. Uh, as for the rear fill, I have the OEM 6x8 speakers back there. For the subwoofers, I have two 8-inch Dayton Audio Ultimax subwoofers uh, in kind of a bodged together box here I know it doesn't look that great but it's nice and tight and sealed uh, at about half a cubic foot per subwoofer it's kind of get you a little close up on those you can see a little more detail on them they are pretty beefy I'm gonna put my hand next to it here um, they do output a good amount uh, they aren't super loud but they sound fantastic in my opinion Uh, go and go ahead and give you a shot of how I installed the amplifiers here behind the carpeting in the OEM location is my NVX 5 channel amp uh, and the wires you see going down there are actually for the subwoofers behind that you probably aren't going to be able to see it uh, but behind this is that little Sony 2 channel amp yeah you're not going to be able to see that but it's sitting back there it's powering my rear channels my for rear fill regarding the other components and pieces to this uh, setup uh, NVX XAP K4 4 gauge amp kit uh, it included 20 foot of 4 gauge and in this car to get the amplifiers installed in that location required every single inch of that wire because the amplifier is on the other side of the car from where the battery is in the front uh, additionally for the RCA cables did some Amazon basic 1x male to 2x male 15 foot cables so I could split out for an active front stage without having to use a DSP as those NVX amplifiers have crossovers capable of doing an active front stage in addition to the Amazon basic cables I have some simple U green branded 15 foot shielded RCA cables and a uh, 15 foot skosh twisted pair cable for my subwoofer that I happen to have. Moving on to the equipment evaluation, not everything is is uh, all roses here. Uh, so this 
Sony WX BT900 has a couple of small faults. Uh, for $110 that I paid for it, I can't really complain too much. Uh, but my biggest gripe with this unit is that on the Bluetooth portion of the system, if you go above, say, volume about, I'd say about 42 out of 50, you start noticing some noise, and it gets louder the more you turn it up. Uh, and this only happens on the Bluetooth side of the amplifier. If you run the auxiliary or the CD side of the head unit, you don't notice that, and that noise is not there. So I believe it's just a component of the Bluetooth system built within this head unit. Uh, some other things that aren't quite as, as gripey, um, the Bluetooth radio occasionally has a reception issue where the audio will cut out for a brief moment, uh, just, a, I mean, a less than a, a fifth of a second or so that it'll cut out, but it's a click, you can tell it's there. Uh, the equalizer that's built in is a 10 band EQ with plus or minus 6 dB adjustments. Having a couple of more bands and a wider range to cut and boost, or rather just cut, you know, generally boost with an EQ, would be nice. Another feature that works pretty well on this unit, I'm going to kind of switch gears to the good side of things. Uh, the time adjustment system works pretty well. I'm going to open up the app for this thing and kind of show you guys how it works. All right, in the advanced car audio settings section of the app, you go to position and you set it based on how many centimeters you are away from that particular speaker. In my case, the front left was 123, front right 160, 65 for the rear left, 111 for the rear right. Uh, and now there's not a whole lot of adjustment you can do on the subwoofer. You can tell it near, normal, or far, and I'm not entirely sure how it adjusts it based on, based on that, but I've found that the best sound stage that I'm hearing out of it is if I just set it to normal, because this is a standard um, you know, mid-size sedan that I'm listening. Moving on to the NVX JAD 900.5, that the amp has more than enough power to to handle this car. Uh, at times, I can't. I, I find it's a bit much on power, uh, as certain um, you know certain types of music cause the midwoofers in the front to extend beyond their capabilities. You can audibly hear the driver based and not uh, not signal based distortion um it is super compact as you as you saw earlier i was able to mount it in the oem location uh with it fit right into the to the spot any larger and it would not have been able to fit and i would have had to make modifications to the bracket but it was just the perfect size to fit in that location another thing one of the negative sides of that amp, everything else about it is fantastic. Um, the crossover uh, system within it has limited set points. Uh, so that what I mean by that is the potentiometer uh, that is used to adjust the crossover points has little notches in it. Instead of being infinitely adjustable, you can only select within the notches that are set on the potentiometer. For the Massive Audio MK6 midwoofers, I am not a big fan of, of Massive Audio after experiencing this component set from them. Uh, the the mid-bass on them is decent. Uh, the problem with it is that it can get a bit muddy as you go up in power. As I mentioned earlier, um, I don't believe that the watt rating of these speakers is accurate. Um, it starts to really overextend the woofer once you get closer to its rated power um, and the mid range on them is rather I would say average um, I have to cut, cut out a lot of the mid range uh, with the Sony's built-in EQ to get them to sound decent otherwise they're just overpowering and grating on your ears with regard to the BZRK SQ T100 tweeter I gotta I've got to say it's one of the best cheap tweeters I've ever bought. I, I bought it for $18 on Amazon. It will likely go up uh, over time. It was kind of an introductory deal. That being said, they're not perfect. Uh, the average, the, the mid-high on them is, is, I would say, average. They really should be crossed at about 4.5K or higher. Uh, the included capacitor goes way below that. Um, they tend to be really peaky at about the 4K range, which is the highest I'm able to cross them with the NVX amp. So I have to do a lot of cutting within the Sony EQ to clean up the sound. 
Now the the high the, once you start going above that range into the high range, uh, there's a good bit of detail with these, uh, and they're clean up to a point. Uh, the the power ratings that these things have of 50 watts, I think that's being generous with regard to good sound quality. I'd say about 25 to 30 watts uh, is a good range for these, and after that you're going to start getting some breaking up of the tweeter, not due to the signal going to them, but due to the, the limitations of the tweeter. Um, I've also noticed that these tend to roll off pretty significantly at higher frequencies, so some of the detail that you would normally get uh, in the higher frequencies is just not going to be there with these. But in the general high area, uh, these are pretty detailed and pretty good bargain for, for what you get. Regarding future plans for my install, I want to completely redo the front stage. I think that whenever I was purchasing these items for the front stage, I was more concerned with budget rather than quality, but I'm always mindful of budget and quality. So I think my next steps for my front stage are going to be uh, Sound Solutions Audio Evil 6.5 mid basses and the Evil Tweeters. I've heard really good things about them, and they are decently priced, so I'm going to go ahead and give them a whirl whenever funds permit. My next um, task after that will be in the rear deck. If you notice, there are two spots that were originally for OEM 6x9 quote-unquote subwoofers, right? These are empty now. Uh, what I would like to do is to take those two Dayton Ultimax subwoofers and mount them with the rear deck to get a completely stealth install. And uh, that way the, the, the subwoofer stage will be brought more into the cab and we'll have to do less time correction and more detail from the subwoofer stage will, will come through. Now I'm gonna, that's going to also introduce some rattling issues that I'll have to deal with, but that's what sound deadening is for. After completing the rear deck subwoofer installation, which I'm probably going to have to get some professional help to deal with, I am going to be working on doing a Windows 10 tablet install in place of the double DIN unit here. And the reason I want to do a Windows 10 tablet install instead of something like an Android tablet is because the audio output with Windows 10 is a lot uh, a lot more configurable versus an Android device. You can get a USB to SPDIF adapter that will output 24-bit uh, 192 kilohertz uh, digital output and set that all within Windows and the applications available for Windows uh, while they're not nearly as good as say Apple or Android are sufficient for a car installation The issue I'm having with the tablet install is that it is difficult to find an 8 inch uh, Tablet of any kind that has a full USB port on it USB OTG has its a giant set of issues with regard to charging and yet yeah, and providing uh, full USB functionality to devices that are connected and so my I, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to need something with a full USB port to prevent those issues from happening. I haven't found any tablets thus far that have, that are 8 inch tablets, have Windows 10, and have a full USB port. So if you know of any, just drop me a comment. And then finally, once I've gotten those pieces in place, my plan is to uh, install a mini DSP CDSP 8, 8x12. Uh, for so I can really start to dive into getting the best quality sound I can out of this platform. I believe that once I've gotten to that point, I will really be able to to unlock the true potential of all of the components that are part of uh, this installation so far. So those are my future plans. It's going to take me a little while to get there, you know, funds permitting. Um, but uh, stick around and uh, subscribe if you want to see more um, drop a like and I'll be sure to post some update videos as I uh, get more uh, get further along in the project thanks for watching